My name is Parker. I live in Denver, Colorado now. Um, last time that we met, I think I was in Austin, Texas. So loving living in Denver. I am, I'm a lot of things. I'm a mom. Um, I work professionally in the mental health space as a peer support specialist and peer advocate, which essentially just means I am a person living in recovery and I get to do really cool things like create positions um, and do workforce development for other people who are living in recovery and really want to give back and, and do this work and advocate. So a lot of my recovery revolves around fitness. Um, fitness has been such a great coping skill for me over the years. Um, I used to hate it. I was the kid who like didn't dress out in PE because um, that was stupid. I wasn't going to do that. I never played sports. Like I hated all of it. And then growing up in like hospitals and going into inpatient places, fitness and health, it's kind of like a forced thing. And so, you know, I had a chip on my shoulder about it and it's been such a cool like evolution of my fitness journey a little bit to go from it being something that I was almost resentful towards. And now it's just like, I live and breathe it and I'm having so much fun with it. I think we probably covered this on, on the last episode, but what for you changed that? Was it a slow chipping away that changed that mentality for you? Or do you feel like it was like an aha moment that when you realized, oh, this is good for me, or this is benefiting me that I need to, and I, I want to take it more seriously or Really, what was that transition? Yeah, I think for me, it was like a long-term chipping away at it. Um, I think there's, I mean, there's still times where I feel like you just go through the motions to get through it, you know, but I think I was in that space for a really long time. And I also feel like I kind of got lost in this weird, like fitness identity thing where, um, especially with social media, that's what you're like looking to in the very beginning of your fitness journey. And so you kind of get this idea that you're supposed to look a certain way or um, present in a certain way. And so I think I definitely got lost a little bit in my like fitness identity. And so through just showing up and consistency, I've been able to like really own my own in it, which has been really cool and really healing in a way. I think for me, you know, I, um, so I have a mental health diagnosis and self-injury was something that I really struggled with um, most of my life. And it's a weird place to put it, but it, it's where I put it into this like real kind of healthy, socially acceptable form of mechanism. Um, but just having an outlet, having a place to like push myself really hard in this really physical and mental way. So much of fitness is mind over matter, right? Like it quits so much faster than your body actually will. And so for me, it's been a lot of that training my brain and getting my head in the right spaces um, and really putting that energy that I obviously have into something positive and productive. Mm -hmm. Is it ever, or was it ever challenging for you to find the, like the truth behind like, okay, well, why am I pushing myself like this? Is it just to like, is it just to make myself like feel bad in another way sometimes? Or is it just like, am I sometimes pushing myself past what my limits maybe are for this workout because I want to make myself feel a certain way and maybe even to the point to where it's like, okay, well, when I do start to do that, it starts to become maybe an unhealthy thing, or maybe you start to see it as like a, like a light maybe comes on for you and you start to see like, this is a path that I could potentially head down. So I need to like steer it in a different direction. Are you a personal trainer, online fitness coach, or gym owner on the verge of burnout? Are you wanting to grow your fitness business, but can't add more hours to your hectic schedule? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. I think it's like an energy of sorts and you just have to be able to like channel it in the right space. And I do think that things can, like anything, can become unhealthy, right? Like any form of anything, if too much of anything is not good for you. And so for me, it's been like, not only am I able to show myself that I can push past where I think I can, um, you feel so good, right? Like you really don't ever leave the gym feeling super terrible. Even when you don't have great lifts, you're like, okay, but I did it. Mm -hmm. um, that consistency, that showing up for myself has been so huge because so much of 
especially through bodybuilding prep, my coach is virtual, right? Like he's in Texas and I'm here and he's amazing. And he puts up with me, which is amazing. Um, patience of a saint, that man. Um, and so like, you're in the gym by yourself at 5.45 in the morning. You're in the gym by yourself at 10 p.m. And so oftentimes I think it's um, for a long time, I relied a lot on external validation. And so much of fitness for me has been about like, I prove it to myself. I was able to show myself that I, I did do it. You can click the button on the app and say you did it, but did you really do it? Did you really push? Did you really give your 100%? And so a lot of it is just like showing up for myself and keeping a commitment I made to myself. Do you find that going into the gym and maybe this is different now looking at it from like a bodybuilder perspective, but do you, do you see the gym or have the experience in the gym where it's like, this is my place of serenity and my place of calmness? Or do you feel more like this is my place of, um, letting it all out, letting it all go kind of deal. So there's this quote that talks about like, you don't know the amount of like savagery that it took to be this gentle, um, and I know that's not accurate. And so I'm sure somebody will be able to, to correct me and, and perhaps even say who quoted that. Uh, but I, that's how I feel about it. Like it is something that's like so loud and big and bold, but it's so calming and soothing and it is a place of serenity for sure. Well, I think it's so interesting. I think that can switch up too, like depending on what, you know, the, the day brings and yeah, you, you, especially in the morning, I feel like there's almost when I work out in the morning, there's almost this sense of like greater um, it's not awareness, but it's like a, it's like you can almost start to look at something in a different light. Like the day when the day starts in the gym, you almost start to, I don't know what it is. I don't think I'm like trying to do it. Like you're looking at the day or you're looking at like what there is to come and you're viewing it instead of like, instead of just taking it on, instead of like, okay, here's oh. this thing is happening. Then that thing is happening. You know, it's like, you're, you're preparing for it. You're, you're going through, um, and just seeing it and viewing it and viewing like the, even in that moment, like you're viewing the moment and you're feeling the moment from like a, at least in my perspective, like it's a broader perspective. Uh, and, and sometimes in the evening, I feel like it's almost the opposite. It's like you go and you're getting your workout in and you're almost like, pushing all the stuff out and you're like, all right, with that, we, we did that already. And now we're just trying to like focus on this thing. That's such a cool way to describe it. It's like in with the morning and out with the day. And yeah, I think I become more intentional. Like I have definitely learned that when I start my day in the gym and now just doing this, I'm in the gym every single morning doing cardio and it has helped me be so much more intentional and thoughtful in my day. And I, I do, cause you kind of take that time to like plan out and think about things and think about what you have coming up in a way that doesn't cause all this anxiety, but you're just kind of being intentional with the way that you're doing things. And it's, it's really cool. I definitely want to get into the bodybuilding side of things for you. What, what drove you to, to want to try that? What, what introduced you to it and how did you, you know, take those initial first steps? Yeah, my coach, um, actually, uh, Chris Alejandro over at the Arc, um, was somebody I was training jujitsu with in a different gym. And um, I took an injury that like really turned me off to MMA for a long time. And like, I kind of felt like I was like floundering a little bit. And it was really difficult to get to the gym because I just didn't really have like goals and direction. Um, and when I first started talking with him about it, um, he was like, you should try this. And I at first had said, I will never do bodybuilding because it's just way too much discipline and it's way too hard. And I would much rather just get punched in the face because that sounds so much more appealing to me. And, um, I don't know, it just seemed like something that was like out of reach for me. Like, that's just not something I would be able to do. Um, and he's been great about really keeping me motivated and keeping my eye on the prize and, um, helping me believe in myself. Like, oh, I can do this. I can go heavier. Um, I can push harder and that's been such a cool thing. How did you start to view the gym maybe in a different light after starting bodybuilding versus not ha you kind of mentioned like not having in that time period, like a specific goal or something specific to strive for. Oh, that's such a great question. Yeah. I, I definitely was able to come back in with like a new fire underneath me in the beginning. I got super discouraged because like, I don't look like a bodybuilder. I don't that seems really hard. I don't think in that direction. And I really kind of felt like I was going all the way back to the beginning 
in the days of like when you're in the gym and you just have no idea what you're doing. And I had been in the gym for so many years before that, but it was like a whole new experience. And it was really, it was exciting. And it was like the gym kind of became this like playground where I could challenge myself and push myself and like really have fun. Mm -hmm. Um, But the deeper I get into prep, like this morning, I was just like crying and I'm like, I cannot do cardio right now. That is, that seems like the most impossible thing. Um, And I was definitely in that mindset of like, oh, I have to, I have to. Um, And it was really cool. Like, you know, 30 minutes in when I'm like dying um, to be like, oh no, I get to like, this is actually such a privilege and it's, it's such a cool thing to be able to do. Was it surprising that you did start to feel like that beginner again in the gym and that person that somewhat didn't really know what was going on, just getting into a whole new sport? It was so humbling. Like I've had people like choke me out, like tap me. I've had people knock me out. This was so humbling. I I mean, it was so bizarre to think I knew what I was doing previously. I just think that's hilarious. And so you always hear that advice. Like everybody says, get a coach, get a coach, get a coach. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, No, that's real. Get a coach. That is very real. I did not have any idea how much I didn't know and how quickly I then started seeing the results was like, oh, right. Okay, cool. With the coach, did you start to feel it all because you, I think maybe at first you maybe started, you felt like, okay, I kind of know what I'm going to do when I get in here and we have kind of an idea, but then you get this instruction, you get this, this plan. It's like, oh my gosh, this is more, maybe more than I thought, or like more in depth, or it's more just, just in general, it's like stuff you don't know. Did you have a sense of being overwhelmed by like, oh my gosh, there's all of this stuff that. I'd never had thought about before. Maybe my coach is now talking about, you know, mind muscle connection, or he's talking about like, you have to do a rep in, in X amount of seconds, or, you know, consider the eccentric for this amount of time or the concentric, or think about, you know, when you're doing a specific exercise, thinking more about moving your leg in this way, like, whereas before, maybe it was like, I'm going to, I'm going to get a workout and I'm going to exercise, but I'm going to do that and I'm not going to train. So in a way, like, did it feel like now the the training aspect is, is almost overwhelming in a sense of how much that is involved? Oh yeah, totally. And you know, I like never took into consideration things like my body length and shape is different. There's so much noise out there about form and do this and don't do that. And so it, that is overwhelming. And then to hear that you had no idea what you were talking about the entire time is super overwhelming. Um, And then you start adding in things like nutrition and things like sleep and things like lowering cortisol levels. And uh, yeah, overwhelming is the right word. It becomes an all consuming thing, which for somebody like me is so perfect because you're thinking about it all day, every day. Kind of gives you something to think about, gives you something to take your mind off of the other, other stressors. Exactly. That's a hundred percent what it is for me. And again, just like channeling all of that energy and putting it into something healthy that gives me an opportunity to like remind myself to do things like drink water. There was a time where I was not drinking water, Daniel, just straight up not drinking water. (laughs) And I think that that, that is really powerful about bodybuilding is you are putting yourself in the sport, you know, like you don't have to get drafted. You don't have to get picked for a team. You don't have to do it you're choosing to start this thing. And just by initiating that, just like all the changes that come from initiating that first, I want to do it. When I do the work in bodybuilding, I see the results Mm -hmm. and it really helped me align how important that is. And like, you can do things that you're just spinning your wheels and you're wasting your time, or you can do things that are productive and you can spend all your energy doing that. And it really prompted me to make like a lot of life changes actually Um, including moving across the country to Denver. So it's been a really cool opportunity for me to be able to grow. And in my like early thirties, it's a cool thing to see myself growing so much. I'm eating healthier and more now than I was before. I was definitely guilty of being somebody who just like lived off of iced coffee all day long and then had like, you know, a burger on the way home from work or whatever and called that healthy. Um, because I wasn't eating a lot. And it's like, no, no, that's totally backwards. And so um, feeling so much, like I feel better when I eat more food, imagine that. And so, yeah, learning about the health aspect of all these things and um, seeing your body respond to it, feeling better. um, It's huge. 
Are you a personal trainer who wants to scale and grow your business online? Have you been coaching online for years, yet don't know how to incorporate online into your current business model? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. I wish I could take that that clip, you know, I feel better when I eat more food. I wish I could take that and like put it on like a, a primetime TV ad spot and, you know, just like tell more people that because it's crazy how I feel like yes. we went from, you know, almost like this sense of indulgence and overindulgence to the point to where like, I think at the beginning, maybe some people not really not to some degree, not knowing a lot of the side effects and a lot of the problems that that can cause. And obviously, you know, with weight gain and obesity, but we've almost switched completely to where it's like, okay, if you want to be healthy, you just don't eat anything. Like, how do you, how do we make people feel like they, like they don't, they don't, they, like you don't have an appetite. Like you, we take that away. And it's just so crazy to me that we've made such like a 180 in regards to that. And how do we get back to like some sort of center, some sort of balance of you can eat food, like you can do it and, and you yeah, should. And you should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and eating like good foods will make you not just look healthy and, you know, fit if you want to call it that, but like, you'll actually be healthy. You'll actually feel good. You'll have energy. Yeah. I think we super overcorrected. Like, I think we super overcorrected. I heard someone tell me the other day who's just like very much beginning their fitness journey that they think they should be eating 1500 calories a day in order to lose weight. And I was like, yo, I'm four and a half weeks out on a prep. And that's like basically what I'm eating. Um, we overcorrected. And I think, again, there's so much noise out there on social media. It's a business at the end of the day. And so people are trying to make money off of people's vulnerabilities. And so we sell people on these ideas that you have to overcomplicate it and you need all these like fancy schmancy things. And it doesn't matter how many times we tell people like, it's just calories in calories out. It's just calorie deficits. And, but we still overcomplicate it because that makes money. I think we live in a society of like instant gratification um that's been another really great thing that bodybuilding has helped me exercise is like that like you do the hard work now and then you get to see the results of it later and I think we live in that world of like I want it right now and we act so much on emotion and I think like there are some really great people out there who I think are trying to promote the evidence-based practices and like go back down to science right like it's it's your body it's chemistry it's literally science and we don't have to overthink it we just have to like know the science behind it. So getting kind of back to your own bodybuilding, when you, when you did start to get into the gym a little bit and, you know, get some training under you and, and maybe some, some, a little bit more confidence, what was that like for you to start to see some things change and see some turning points, if you will? Um, did you grasp onto that like very quickly or was that something that took a while for you? I had a vein and I was like, oh my God. And it was the first time that I felt like I kind of, am I a bodybuilder? Like, is this what bodybuilding is? Um, And that was like the fuel that really led me. Um, And then body dysmorphia came in and was like, you're not going to feel good about this no matter what. And so that has been such a struggle. Um, And it kind of ebbs and flows, you know, like I uh, will text my coach and be like, I can never step on a stage. Why would you ever let me do this? And he's like, it's going to be okay. Um, That confidence piece is like such an interesting journey throughout bodybuilding. How have you managed and and handled the body dysmorphia aspect? I mean, is it something that you ever not like, I don't think anyone looks at it and goes, I'm glad that like this is going on, but do you ever sit back and think this really hit me when I did start to feel better about myself. So it's in, in some senses, like, is that a product of seeing some sort of success? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously you don't want to take the the bad with the good, but in some senses, do you ever just think, well, if I didn't have this, would I maybe even be doing as well as I hoped I would be? 
Yeah, I think it keeps pressure on, right? Like in some capacity, it keeps the pressure there. And there are so many times where I'll go back and I'll look at a picture that I took that when I took it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is awful. And then you go back and you're like, oh my God, what was I talking about? This is like amazing. And so I always tell people like, take pictures, right? I think that's so important. It's not just because I'm annoying. Um, I think it's an important part of tracking your journey and being able to like see the tangible proof of what it really was. Um, and I think as a woman, like body dysmorphia is just such a thing. I think there's a lot of pressures out there. I think there's a lot of people who um, do things to their body and deny that. And that, that gets really confusing. And I think like um, one thing that I've told my coach is like, I have to be super careful. Like I'm competing in a natural um, federation. Like I, we do everything naturally. And I often find, find myself like comparing myself to people who are like, openly using things and openly using enhancements and I have to remind myself like oh wait reality mm. um, but that's a hard thing to do yeah well I think it is it's it's hard but you know you mentioned openly doing those things and I think that we are in some senses lucky it, it, for this time period uh, you know in this industry of bodybuilding that people can be a little bit more open about that and are a little bit more open about that I think that there's there's two sides of the coin, right? Because it's like, well, if people are open, then maybe that's going to get more people doing it in a less responsible way that just want to, you know, be like the person they see. But at the same time, it's like, well, maybe that's possibly true, but maybe another outcome is like people will A, see that as an enhanced version of something that they didn't know was enhanced before, which is good education, good to know. Like if you're working out trying to be like somebody and you're not seeing those results, you start to feel bad about yourself and you don't know, you know, don't know why you can't have what they have. Um, but it also maybe puts, sheds more light on like, okay, well, what are smart ways to, if you want to do this, what are smart ways to do this? How are, you know, how, how can that person that actually, you know, figures it out, how can they do that in a, in a more controlled environment, if you will. So I think that there's definitely a yeah. lot of aspects to think about. Yeah, I think those that goes back to like the principles of like harm reduction in general, no matter what you're talking about. I think that that's always such a delicate conversation. Um, it's something we certainly, it's a conversation we have a lot in the mental health and substance misuse space about harm reduction and what is better. Um, and I think the more we educate people and the more transparency and authenticity that exists, the more people can make those educated decisions um, for themselves. But yeah, I think one thing that you said that's so important is like, you're looking at somebody who's like, there's filters and there's editing and there's steroids and there's plastic surgery. And you're like, I don't understand why I can't look like this. I don't understand why I can't get there. It must be me. There's something wrong with me or I'm a failure or whatever the case is. We start like that nasty comparison game and that's a dangerous road to go down. Mm -hmm. So being early in your bodybuilding journey, and seeing, you know, so many people that have been doing this for, for years or in some senses, you know, a decade or more, where do you, and maybe it's something that you try not to do, but where do you, if you do look at someone and go, I know I'm not there yet. And maybe I won't get there because of the things we're talking about, but I can see, and I can maybe learn a little bit about like what that shape is and what they're doing to maybe sculpt in a certain way. And not that you're obviously going to, you know, go against what your coach is saying to do, but like where you can almost learn a little bit from just being in the environment and around those, you know, those people who are in some senses, like where you want to be. Yeah. That's been really huge actually, because I am starting this so late in the game. Um, I just did my first show in April at 33 years old. And so this is so brand new to me. And there is always that party that's like, uh, I think Joe Rogan talks about this, but like, oh, I wish I would have started sooner. I wish I would have started earlier. Um, and it's a bummer to know you don't have that. But I still feel good about where I'm coming from because I do have a good foundation. But it has been so helpful to just like immerse myself in the world. And like, even when you're just trying to be brainless and get cardio, like get through those 45 minutes or get through that hour, um, just watching like certain people's podcasts or like going in and like watching people's vlogs. I've learned so much and it has been really cool. And I feel super privileged because it's like you were talking about before those glory days, people had to just like do things and figure it out. And I feel like now there's so many like hacks and so many paths you can take. And people are so great about information sharing in this space. 
which has been really cool and kind of unexpected, to be totally honest. Um, people are really willing to share best practices and really willing to share like, oh, don't do this. Don't make this mistake. So it's been really cool to learn this much. Well, it's funny. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I, th and I think it was on Pumping Iron. But when Arnold was teaching this like somewhat newer bodybuilder, and this was back in the day, like giving him posing uh, tips. And he was like, you want to like, look at, look at the crowd with like an insane look in your eye. You want to, you want to scream at them. Like he was just giving like the worst advice. <laughs> and um, <Scream> <laughs> he was like giving the worst posing advice, but it's, it's funny because like we can laugh about it, but, but to some extent, like that was, that was like such a different time and that, and, and it was a different feeling of like what, the community meant in some ways, I think like, yeah, now, like so much, like you said, so many people are willing to share or like, you can, you can just ask somebody like, well, what would you do? How would you do this? How would you handle this? You know, I'm going through this. And like, so many people are willing to share their advice, whether it be like at a Olympian level or like Olympian level coaches or pro coaches or whatever. And, you know, whether, whether it be free or whether it be through, you know, uh, courses and stuff that they have, like there's so much information and it can really help like expedite that process for a lot of people. Um, but for you, how have you kind of managed the information and the, some, some, in some senses like information overload with it, with the, um, just being where you are and like knowing I'm at this stage and I, and doing these things right now is going to be the most beneficial. I think I'm hyper aware that just because someone's on the internet does not mean they know what they're talking about. That doesn't mean that they have any sort of like credential or, or maybe that's what worked for them. Maybe who knows? It has been hard to like figure out what to listen to and what not to listen to. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just like stick to the things I know, you know, and I really view it more as like entertainment that maybe I can get knowledge out of. You know, for you looking at like the, the specifically, you know, your first getting into that, that peak week or, you know, a couple weeks before and thinking about going on stage was that something that you did start to look, look around a little bit for and not just in regards to like the X's and O's, but you know, how am I, how am I going to respond to this? How, how have other people handled this, this venture and, and stuff like that? Yeah. Posing and being on stage is, is the most terrifying thing that I've ever experienced in my entire life ever. I was so scared. The very first time I went to go meet with my posing coach, I was two hours late because I had a full fledged anxiety attack on the floor of my bathroom. And I was like, I cannot do this. And, you know, in the MMA space, you're very much like channeling this like masculine energy and you're in this like very different headspace. And now I'm going like in a bedazzled bikini in five inch heels. Like it's a totally different 180. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so awkward and so uncomfortable with it. And so that I did do a lot of deep diving and just like watching um, watching the pros, watching the Olympia, watching how other people are posing. My body is super, I'm just very rigid. Um, when I was doing MMA, my MMA coach very lovingly called me Rock'em Sock'em Robots because I am just like super rigid. I have like a hardcore boxer stance for like no reason. And I'm just a really rigid person. And so bodybuilding is, it's bikini, it's flow, it's presentation. And so it's been a totally like, it's been the hardest part of all of it for me. Do you find yourself in like non bodybuilding situations start to try to like be more flowy or like move in more of like a flowy just to like get that down on such like a subconscious level? Yes. I've even asked the people around me, like I'll hold my shoulders really tight. And like, if you see me do it, just like force me accountability, like force me to put my shoulders down. Um, I'm it. And it's been really cool. It's been like, I feel almost like I've unlocked parts of my body that I didn't know that I necessarily had. Um, I'm a big fan of the book, um, The Body Keeps Score, which talks about how your body holds trauma. Um, and so that was like a really big part of, of a lot for me is like going back and exploring those things. Mm -hmm. um, and But it's like being on stage and posing is the scariest thing ever. Literally asking someone to judge your body. <laughs> judge all the work that you just did like that part is really scary and you know in MMA they say like if you want to win don't leave it up to the judges and in bodybuilding it's entirely up to the judges that's the whole point 
And that is really a hard thing. I think my, my last show, my first show that I did, I was like, if I can just make it to stage, if I can just complete the process from start to finish and feel like, okay, yes, I gave it my all, I'll feel really great. Um, and so I made it and I did it and that felt really great. And then there is that part of me now that's like, okay, but the fire has been lit and now it's not enough just to show up. Like now I want to, I want to win it now. This podcast is sponsored by Smoking Gun Coffee, a veteran owned coffee company that strives to give back to those in need. Don't forget to use code TWR10 for a 10% discount at checkout. Did you have any fears or any, any nervousness just in, obviously in the whole, like, getting in front of, you know, people and judges like that is one thing, but did you have any specific fears of like, Oh man, I don't, you know, I'm really concerned about tripping or I'm really concerned about like turning the wrong way, or I'm really concerned about like just something that most likely isn't going to happen, but like just those small things. Yes. I feel like I can do anything in heels. Like I once won a jump roping contest in like seven inch heels. So heels don't scare me. Um, however, like when people start using words like South or left or right or West and North, like you lost me and I will almost inevitably do the opposite. That part really did freak me out. Um, and I forgot like a portion of my routine because I was so nervous. And so I didn't realize that until I got off and I was like, oh, wow, I totally forgot to do like four seconds worth of work, um, which was really annoying. And as soon as I got on stage, my nail broke. And so that was just one of those things that in my head, like, obviously no one saw it, but I was really nervous about that. And my kids were in the audience. So I had both my daughters there. um, And that part, like, as soon as I saw them, I felt like a weird calm and then like a very nervous because I wanted to make my kids proud. And I also knew that if I was like totally like just awful, that their face would totally tell me like, but they were clapping and they weren't embarrassed. So it was great. <laughs> that's funny. That's, that's, that's really interesting to, uh, because kids really, they, a lot of times they, they know how to lie, but they don't know how to like lie in the right situation. So Correct. <laughs> that is absolutely right. And so I get roasted all the time where my 15 year old's like, you look like such a millennial today. Uh, and so I felt really good that she was like, you're doing a great job. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool to have that, that support there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And now she wants to do bodybuilding. She wants to get into it. So she's been going to the gym and being super consistent. It's been really cool. Wow. Yeah. That is cool to kind of inspire in a way that isn't like, and and I'm not, you know, there, but just assuming that it's not like, Hey, you have to like do this or like, look at me doing this. So you want to do this. It's more like a passive inspiration of like, And I think that people can really grasp onto that, especially, you know, when it comes to a teenager or a kid, it's like, I can see, like, I can see how that's making that person feel better. I can see how it's making them like, uh, like a better version of themselves, I guess. So I I don't know if you can even like communicate that with somebody. It more has to be like in what you do. Oh, totally. And she hears me complaining all day, every day. And like, sees me eating my like chicken packets and ground turkeys and black baggies and um is she's honestly like my girls are my biggest cheerleaders and um it has been cool like they will tell me I'm doing a good job or like I'll come home in the morning from cardio and they're just coming out of their room and I get like a high five because you know I'm out there doing it so it's been a really cool thing and yeah I never want my kids to feel like they have to do things Um, and so it's been super cool to see her just like doing it. I was not motivated to do anything when I was 15 years old. So just seeing her like show up and get up and do the work is really cool. Looking into, you know, after that first show, what was that experience like just getting off stage and the the day of, and the day after, and the few days after, what was that like for you? My immediate getting off stage, I was, I, I had like half a moment of feeling like relief. And then I had the next moment of like, I was so afraid I had disappointed people Um, coming in second in open. I was like, so worried that people were going to feel disappointed. And that was not the case. You know, obviously like all my support system was super great and just kept cheerleading me. And I think like, first of all, after getting the first meal after the show, that cheeseburger made everything feel better. The cheeseburger and donut that I had made everything feel better. Um, but I did feel really good. I felt really accomplished. I felt like I had put my mind to something and and saw it through from start to finish. And 
I do feel like I poured everything I could. I don't think I left what I was scared I was going to leave on the table. Going in and looking at like, okay, we have another show to do. Did the feeling for you change at all? Like, you know, looking at your first, first show, I can imagine there would be one set of emotions or one set of feelings, but did, did that shift at all going into, you know, looking at your second show and thinking I kind of have a little bit of an, I know what's going to happen in a sense. I know what's going to go on backstage. I know what's going to like, it's going to feel like to get on stage. I know it's going to feel like to come off stage. So have you kind of almost packaged up another set of emotions in, in a sense for the second show? Yeah, I think so. I think um, a lot of my first shows, like I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea what I was doing literally at all. And so again, it was just like, oh, I showed up. So I made it. And that's awesome. And now that I have an idea, like really gaining my confidence in it and really getting my own personality in it and not just going through the motions, but like really doing it the right way. Um it is a different feeling. This show is also a lot bigger than the the show that I did in April. Um, and so that is certainly really intimidating to me. <laughs> is there a feeling because it is bigger that I feel like bigger is definitely like more people, but do you feel like that you may have the feeling of like, I don't want to get lost in just the amount of people, or I don't want to get lost in just the amount of competitors or, like just how big this, how much bigger this event may be. Like I still, I still want to bur- like it, it needs to be an equivalent, like a, 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 to a ratio of how the feeling should be, you know, like what I'm trying to say, like, you don't, yeah. want, you don't want like a smaller show to be like, I'm the star or like, um, I can bring a certain energy because it is small, but you also don't want to like go overboard with a bigger show or like overdo it or over, you know, even in some sense, like over dramatize, like how, what you think that show will be like, because it is bigger. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I think, um, like through stalking, you know, on the internet, I'm like gotten myself a little bit worked up and a little bit in my head about it. And I think you said it well, like getting lost in the crowd is something you don't want to have happen. Right. You want to make sure that you stand out. And when the competition is like so impressive and everyone stands out, you have to really figure out how to differentiate yourself and and really bring your personality and your character and let who you are really come through. And I think that's the really neat part of bodybuilding has been finding my voice and finding in my own body. Mm -hmm. Because of that first show was, you know, your first show and you're kind of like the bodybuilder on stage for the first time. In what ways do you feel like that the second show and and probably, you know, a few shows after, depending on, you know, how that goes, but in what ways do you think that the second show, you're almost going to go up there and, and think like, let's try this out. Let's try this little different thing out with, you know, a foot movement or like, and, and, and also like your, your own energy and your own attitude in a sense, like your own stage presence. Like, do you almost feel like you're, 2.0ing that or do you feel like you're almost like just revamping it in general or or what is like the to what degree I guess are you going up to uh, to refine versus like reinvent oh that's I like that refine versus reinvent yeah I think we're in refine space I think that I think I really am proud of the package that I brought the last time I think there was definitely um, a lot of things that I wish I would have done differently or I wish I would have done better um you don't know what you look like on stage until you watch yourself on stage and you don't really realize what it looks like until you're watching it back. And it feels very different than it looks as it all turns out. Um, and so I think like having the awareness of that, um, I'm, I stomp walk. So I've been told I speed walk and stomp walk everywhere I go. Like I'm on a freaking mission and I am going. And so slowing down, like realizing this is not a race. We're not running to anything. We're not running into a street fight right now. Um, my posing coach, like slow down, slow down, slow down. Um, and I think a lot of that comes with just like being comfortable and feeling confident and knowing like, okay, I know what I'm doing this time. Um, and I also think like when you're on your first show, you kind of have that little bit like, oh, it's my first time. So it's okay. And then coming into the second one, it's like, okay, you should know what you're doing now. And so the pressure definitely feels higher and harder yeah that's interesting have you ever seen uh miss congeniality no okay well you have to watch that one too but specifically there's a scene it's probably near like the 
kind of the beginning of the middle, but it's this guy teaching the main character how to walk like a like a mo like a model like a um, like Miss America model. It's so funny. I, you can probably find it on YouTube if you just like Google Miss Congeniality <laughs> learning how to walk or something like that. But it's so funny. It kind of reminded me of that. And he's like giving her all these tips on do this, do that, do, do use your calves or like keep your head this way. And it's just it made me uh, think about that. But um, yeah, I was like a punk rock kid who hung out with like the skateboarding <laughs> kids and then did MMA. Like femininity and like grace is not exactly what I'm known for. So it's been a full 180. But, but in some senses, do you feel like that, that is like you, that you use that background and you use that uniqueness to like bring your own flair to also like the bikini division in a way? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's something really cool about kind of having that, still having that edge about me a little bit. Um, and I think that like one thing that's really come in handy is like, I've taken a lot of shots to the core. I have a very conditioned core. And so my core is like, we can hold it. We can be there. No one's hitting me. No one's kicking me. This is great. I can chill here forever. So I've definitely even seen like some of the benefits of having that background uh, show up on stage. It would be kind of cool. And I don't know if I've ever, ever seen it and it might be out there, but if there was some sort of like, almost like dangerous vibe that you could like bring to that, you know, like, like in, I'm trying to think of like a character. Um, I don't know if this is good or not, but almost in like a kill bill kind of way, you know, totally. like, uh, um, oh gosh, there's another one. I can't think of, I can almost see it, but I can't think of who it is, but almost in that sense where it's like respected, but dangerous, but also like, you don't like, you want to watch it. Yeah. Like I want to be cute, but I also want you to know that I can totally kick your ass. Yes, exactly. That's the vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would, be, that would be kind of a, a unique twist to bring to it. But, yeah. um, you know, looking into the future of your bodybuilding experience, what does that hold or what, what do you, what do you feel like at this point that that holds? Like, do you have kind of like a plan with that or is it just like, let's just see where it goes? Yeah, I have no plan. I have no expectations. Honestly, I did not think I would have as much fun to the process as I have had. And I think everyone around me is probably laughing when they hear me say th things like that. Cause I just complain constantly um, but it has been such a fun experience. And my initial thought to my coach, when I, when we first started working together, I was like, even if I don't actually step on a stage and compete, I just want to go through the process. Um, I have enjoyed the process so much and not that I, I mean, yes, I was terrified to go on stage. I did have a great time. I had so much fun, but it's really this part. It's like being in the grind that I really, really enjoy. And if I could have this kind of pressure on me just all of the time. Like, I love it so much. Do you think that though, so, if there wasn't a show that you would feel that pressure and it would like, it, would it, would you be able to keep to it? No, no, not at all. And, and that's, that's exactly what he told me. He's like, it's a totally different thing. Um, and yeah, no, if I didn't have that, even before when I knew, like I had my eye on this show before I had even officially registered for it, I even think that kind of like tricks your brain into, into a different direction, you know? And so now I think I need the pressure. I need the hard date. My ADHD otherwise is just like, whoop, it's gone. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the future holds or what we'll do, but I really want to keep doing this because I'm having so much fun. That's great. I had a similar, uh, kind of situation when it comes to, uh, running, I, I knew I wanted to do something. This was five years ago now, but I know I kind of wanted to do something like a little bit more, a little bit more challenging. And so I was like, maybe a marathon. And, and so I actually initially thought about it and was like, I'll just like train for it and then maybe do it. And then I was like, all right, I need to actually like sign up for this. So I have like an actual date and I have like an actual reason. And it really did like make that switch in my own head to be like, I can't go out there now that I'm signed up and I've paid for it. And like, <laughs> you know, like barely get through like 10 miles or, bar or not be able to finish or not be able to like do the thing whenever, it, but that really kicked me into gear. And it, I went from like, you know, running maybe like a few miles a week to as soon as I did, I was like, all right, let's like get the paper out. Let's get, you know, the pen and paper out and start writing. Yes. And like, I'm doing this, this day, I got to run this many total miles in the week. I got to, you know, think about rest here. I got to think about, you know, maybe I'll cycle. I got to think about this. Got to think about water. And, you know, I, yeah. like, I got to get new shoes now. Cause like, I got to get running shoes. So all the things clicked into place when, when I actually signed up for the event. 
Yeah. Did you run a marathon? Yes. That, that is was, so freaking impressive. It was actually 2019. It was right before we started the podcast. So. Oh, very cool. I cannot run. Like I always tell people, like, if you see me running, you should run. Cause like <laughs> I'm running from something like I don't run. I'm not a runner. Um, it's very difficult. I'm very impressed with you right now. Thank you. Well, it, it, it was more of a, I want to do this as like a bucket list thing. than like, I love running, you know, like, no, I don't know who loves running. Yeah. That was, that was more of the, more of the motivation. Not like I want to be like the next, you know, great marathon runner by any means. <laughs> That's so cool. And you know what? I think there's so much beauty in that. Like that was so a driver for me to go into bodybuilding. I mean, I really just, wanted to go out of my comfort zone. I wanted to see if I could do something that I didn't think I could do. And I think that's such a cool part of being a human being. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the fun part about fitness too, is like you yeah. can go from, you know, fighting to, to bodybuilding or powerlifting or strongman. Like you can push your body in such like a, a wide range of achievements from, you know, ultra marathons, even like running 50 miles or a hundred miles or for days on an end, or you can go and like try to lift a thousand pounds and like do all yeah. that crazy stuff too. There's so much you can do. Yeah. The body is such a fascinating mechanism, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's fun to train it. It's fun to see what, you know, your own body is capable of and and push it to sometimes pass to what you think it's capable of. That's, that's really kind of in some sense is the most rewarding part. Oh yeah. There's like nothing better than like lifting a weight that you didn't think that you could lift or like getting to a rep you didn't think that you could get to. Like there's just nothing more satisfying than that feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or seeing, you know, just seeing your body change when it comes to bodybuilding, like yeah, today, like I look a little bit, you know, different, like, you know, the vein or the, you know, you mentioned the vein or, you know, the, the ab or, the the as you're getting into prep you know like the just the shreddy the shreddiness of the muscle it looks you know you're looking in a certain way that you've never looked before and I think that's probably a pretty interesting time that you went through and you know that first prep and probably you know in this prep as well and in future preps just like how you will do a similar process but continue to get better and continue to notice and, and grow in those different ways yeah and that is the cool part is like you you grow and then you're like, oh my God, this is so cool. And then you grow again and you're just like, oh, we're keep, here we go. We're just on our way. And that's been such a cool thing to like really see my body change. And some of the feedback that I received from the judges um, in my last show was around um, really balancing my lower body. And just for me, personally, that's just where I hold more fat. It's just like my bigger area for me. And so this prep has really been focused on like whittling it down and bringing it down. And so um, when I did my check-in the other day and my coach texted me, he was like, hey, I, I see the hamstring work. I was like, oh my God. It was so great. Yeah. Well, best of luck in continuing to grow and continuing to, you know, to sculpt in some ways. It's it's going to be, you know, really exciting as you continue to get closer to your show. I look forward to, you know, following along in that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And if you want to share anything, any uh, socials or anything before you head out, you can. Yes. Follow me along on Instagram at Parker Likes Fighting. If you're tired of searching for a coach or trainer, somebody who knows what they're talking about and has experience, make sure you go check out the new Coach's Corner on weightroompodcast.com. You can find quality, qualified coaches to help you achieve your goals, whether that's in bodybuilding or just general fitness. Stop wasting time and start achieving your goals today. The link to the Coach's Corner is down in the description below.